In this video, I'm going to go over using a couple's photo in your template. Okay, it's going to be very easy. So let's just go ahead and create a new template. We'll just leave this as untitled. And I'm going to leave everything as like so. Keep it white, CMYK color. Okay, great. Okay, good. So now I'm going to drag in a, an image I got from unsplash.com. Unsplash is a website where you can download and use commercial free images that people have uh, donated to the website. I believe it's by different photographers and they're commercial free. So you can definitely use them for any type of project and you don't have to worry about the license. So I'm going to just resize this by just dragging down the corner here. And I'm going to make this about here because I want to show you a quick little way of how you can blend this image in uh, so that way you don't have to do too much editing and just doing using a lot of these tools it's just a quick little tip so now what you can do is you can either press enter or you can press the checkbox at the top so I'm gonna press the checkbox to place it there and as you can see when I dragged in the image it created a, a new layer for it as you can see this is called a smart a smart layer and so to get rid of that you can press right click and rasterize the reason why it's a smart layer is that it wants to preserve as much of the information on that image so that way if I didn't want that size I can resize it and it's not really affecting the image at all so I can blow it up I can make it smaller and it's still retaining a lot of the information so I'm gonna just change it back to here and another tip you can do is you can press uh, command Z and that will change that will undo your previous uh, action so I'm gonna go back up and I'll put it there I'll just press enter all right so I'm gonna make it um, not a smart object no more I'm just gonna right click and go to rasterize layer so now it's a regular object on my canvas Okay, so what I'm going to do next is take the smudge tool. And 70% is pretty good. I just want to keep it at 70%. I'm going to use my left bracket key to bring it down just one time. And then I'm going to start smudging it out. So very quickly, I'm just smudging out the corner so it doesn't look so sharp. And it doesn't look like I just placed it there. Because I like a lot of my templates to look blended it just makes it look more um, I feel like it gives it a little bit of a nicer aesthetic to it and just overall looks a little bit more pleasing to look at kinda gives it that uh, little drawn in effect as you're just being drawn into the photo here so I just did that very quickly and so now I'm gonna click on this background layer so that way I can create a new layer and then with the new layer, I'm going to go ahead and select my rectangle. And so with the rectangle, I have a fill color of this blue. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to, if let's say I was here, but I wanted to sample one of these colors here, I can just click with the eyedropper. And it'll select a color that's similar to what I just clicked on. So if you're not sure where I just went, I went to here. I first I clicked on the fill. And I went to the custom color. This is how you can get a custom color for you to use. So I'm going to just drag this to a little bit more of a blue. Let's say about right there. And I'll press OK. So now I'm going to take off the stroke because it's not really needed for this, this rectangle that I'm doing. I'm just putting a different background color. So I'm going to just drag from here all the way down. And I'll let go. So like I mentioned before, this video is just about how to use a, a couple's image if they want you to put it in there and a quick little tip that you can uh, easily place it there if you're in a hurry and so now what I'm gonna do is select this one command press press and hold command and select that one so now I'm gonna right click and go to merge layers because I want to combine the two and with them combined it I'm gonna go back up to my smudge tool and then I'm going to start stretching out this 
a little bit more and so now it's like really blended in with the blue okay just taking some time to process it but all right that's pretty good and then like if you notice too you can click back and you can just kind of swirl those around if you wanted to so it depends on how much how much do you pull from the image all right so that's, that looks pretty good right there so uh, next thing I want to do is I'm gonna go over to the new layer I'm gonna add a new layer and then I'm going to go back to my rectangle, and but this time I'm going to add a stroke to it because we are going to use a stroke. And that stroke can be any color, just the same way that I put a different color for the fill. It's just that this time I'm going to use it as a picture box. So this is where I'm going to add the, the boxes to be used in my PhotoBoost software. So depending on what type of style you want the photo boxes to be. For this one, I'm just going to make one square, a rectangle like that and let go so you see like you have a border there so next thing I'm gonna go is select the move tool or you can press the letter uh, V to go to the, the move tool if you'll hover over you'll see the letter V as the move tool next I'm gonna hold the option key and I'm gonna click and drag away if I do this it just freely goes but if I hold the shift while I'm holding option, it kind of leaves it in place. So I like to do that so I can measure out about 0 0.05 inches. And then I'm going to hold shift, I mean hold option still, and then drag down and hold shift as well. So now I'm going to go to another 50, like so, and then do the same one for the last one. And there you go. You got four boxes evenly, evenly spaced out. And what I'll do is, while this one is selected, I'm going to hold shift and click on the first one. Then I'm going to do command T. And now I can move all of them. So I'm going to place them right about there. I'm going to, let's go ahead and move it about, let's do it at the top corner. And then I'll just stretch it out this way. So that way it gives us room to kind of add something at the bottom. So I'll press enter. And then what I like to do too, to also to organize all of these layers while these are all selected, I'll go down to the folder here and I'll press on that. And it gives it the, uh, it groups them all into one folder. So if I double click on the name, I can rename this to photo boxes. And at least now it looks all pretty organized. It's the very important to keep these layers organized so you can always refer back. If let's say the couple wanted some revisions done to it, you can quickly go in there and figure out, oh, okay, this is where the layer is for that type of graphic. And now I'm gonna just make a quick change to that. All right, so now that this is done, we can go to add a new layer. And this would be the text here. So I'm gonna just click on the text tool and we want to use something that's very simple. I feel like the it's like a rustic type of thing. So let's go ahead and just use this one right here. This one's the Adorn. And I got this from the Type, type Kit uh, little section that uh, Adobe has. They, they give you all these like type kits that you can uh, you can use for your projects commercial free as well. So be sure to get that too. Uh, that's It's a very useful thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and we'll just give it the typical name of John and Mary or Mary and John. We'll do Mary and John. Mary and John. Okay, and then we'll click on the checkbox. I'm going to press the letter V on the keyboard to go to my move tool. And I'm going to move this over here, kind of center a little bit. Press Command T to resize it and then I'm going to hold option while I stretch out this corner so that way it keeps it there but only enlarges the size in the same exact spot so that's how you keep everything very uh, symmetrical and kind of organized so that everything looks just nice and 
uh, set there. So I'm going to press the enter and we're pretty much done. Uh, one little tool, one little tip, I'm sorry, would be to double click on, on here and you have the layer styles. I'll get more into the layer styles a little later, uh, but I just wanted to show you something that you can do if, if you want to make the text kind of pop a little. You can click on the bevel and emboss. So if I click on that, uh, it'll it'll make the so let me just go ahead and command plus to zoom in, and I'm holding the space bar. So as you can see, right about there, it's a little hard to see because of the color black, but it makes it uh, kind of curved if if you want. So if I were to maybe enlarge this. So as you can see, as I'm moving this slider here, it's making it a little bit curved. So that kind of gives it some sort of depth. And if I press the gradient overlay, kind of gives it some more shadow there. So you can bring up the opacity. And I'll just press OK. But we'll play around with those a little bit later. I just wanted to give this one a quick little rundown of how I blend in a a couple's image into the background and of course you can do something extra to kind of throw in here you can probably uh, add in um, maybe some more information uh, you know maybe you want the the name up here so it can kind of cover up some of that stuff uh, but this is just very quick you know I, I would take more time and a little bit more creative thought into uh, doing something a little bit more to this template but I just wanted to show you something that you can do very quickly uh, just by using the smudge tool here and uh, adding in the light blue or sky blue background. All right, so now that we're pretty much done with this one, I'm going to go ahead and right click. First, I do like to press Command S, and that is going to go to my desktop and save it. So I'll just go ahead and save that like so. And then to finalize this template here, we're going to go to right click and I go to merge visible. So it's going to merge all my layers. And I'll, I'll go into more uh, details about why I, I choose merge visible uh, when I'm creating other types of templates in, in the upcoming videos. So as, as I'm in the merge visible, I combined all the layers that were visible and I'm going to click on this little uh, lock right here. When I click on that, it turns it into a regular layer, but everything is, is all one now. So if I were to move this, everything's all one. I'll press Command Z. And now this is what I was mentioning uh, before, is that this tool right here is what I use as the last step. So this is the magic wand tool. So if I click on, the reason why I made these, these black borders is that I can easily just click on this and it selects the inner part of it. So now I'll press the delete, click on the next one, press delete, click on the next one, delete, and click on the next one, press delete. So now if I press command D, it gets rid of that those dotted lines, uh, the deselect. So now everything's pretty much you can call this transparent. So if I were to press uh, option, shift, command, S, all in that same order, it's going to bring up another another uh, option here for you to save. So we're going to save for web. I'm going to leave it at PNG and transparency. What that's going to do is that if I move this over, it's going to make these photo boxes here transparent. So now in the photo booth software, uh, if you whichever one you plan on using, you can place the photo boxes behind the artwork and you don't have to worry about it overlapping your artwork. You know, you don't have to make it fit perfectly in this box because this is transparent and you can place the photo boxes behind the artwork. So then I'm going to hit save. Just make sure that these this is checked here, transparency and PNG. So now it's, as you can see, my other, my other untitled uh, one PSD and that's the Photoshop file and now you have an untitled dot PNG so I'm gonna hit save so now it saved it so I do not very importantly do not want to hit command save I do not want to save it like so uh, so when you're done you can just exit out 
So I don't want to save that. And then when you want to come back into it, because you already previously saved it when you before you combined all the layers, let's say you need to make a quick adjustment. I can just double click on this. And so now you see all your layers here because we didn't save it when we combined them. We saved it right before uh, we combined all the layers. So now if you need to make any adjustments, you can just click on this and move this around. So very importantly, do not save it uh, when you combine them because you want all the layers to be here and you want to be able to access all your layers. You only combine them when you, you're ready to uh, cut out these boxes because that's that's the final and last step to creating each revision that the client asks you for. Okay, I hope this makes sense. If not, you can uh, ask me a question and I'll be able to reach out to you. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next video. And in the next video, we're gonna use the same image, but I'm gonna use a different background. And I'm gonna use the pin tool to show you how to uh, cut around people. Okay, all right, we'll see you in the next video.